Welcome everybody to today's online workshop, the seven steps to writing successful grant applications. Now, I just want to start by saying thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and learn a new skill or improve your skills you've already got when it comes to writing grant applications. So um, if you can just pop yourselves on mute, but I will be asking you some questions later on and interaction. And if you do have any questions, please do pop them into the chat with a capital Q at the start. Um, so that I know where those questions are and I'll answer my, as we go and do my best to answer them. So um, let's get started. So who here today is a small business owner? Pop up your hand if you are a small business owner or type yes into the chat. Yes, there's a few of you. Now, how many of you are already wearing too many hats in your business? I'm sure there's a few of you. And how many of you are just already too busy and doing anything extra or additional to what we're already doing in our lives just seems way too overwhelming. So that's what we're here today to demystify some of the um, myths and talk about grant applications and how we can get the best out of them to make us successful and to be really efficient about how we write them. Um, and there are, have been a few of you to touch base and ask how we can work together. There will be an opportunity um, towards the end of the webinar where I outline those opportunities. Um, so that will be great. And when it comes to grants for businesses, there are many different ways that we can take advantage of these grants and also use the process to our advantage to grow and expand our business. But when it comes to business grants um, and time and time again, when I'm talking to business owners and that that can mean little little micro businesses and up to multi-million dollar businesses that they're like, oh, there's grants. I didn't know anything about them. So I've got to work with a range of clients across a range of industries that just simply do not know anything about grants. And that's why you're here today to learn more about it and to be able to um, use them to your advantage. So one of the biggest problems with grants is the short application time. We don't know when the grants are going to come out, when the grant programs will be released, and then they say, oh, the deadline is in four weeks' time or five weeks' time, which is not a lot of time when we're already too busy and trying to do everything else in our business. So as I've said, we already know that resources and time are scarce, and so we don't want to add that extra hat onto your hat rack for your business. But I do want to ask you this question. <clears throat> How much free money are you missing out on in grant opportunities? Now, you may think, well, Liz, I don't know the answer to that. That's why I'm here today. So this is what I just want you to ponder. And, and it all comes down to we don't know what we don't know. And I'm all about creating that awareness, improving people, people's knowledge and information about the grants and how they can help your business or your community organization or your not-for-profit. So I'm Liz, the Efficiency Coach, and I'm a business mentor and grants coach working with small business to get the best out of their business, to maximize the opportunities, and so that you have the tools and resources at your fingertips to be able to go and apply for that grant when it comes out. I always talk about grant readiness, and that is the key to getting more funding for your business. And as a chartered accountant, this all comes back to funding, money, and having a strategy of what you're going to spend in your business to make it grow, to increase those efficiencies, to be able to put on more staff and end up ultimately with more profit and more um, efficient operations of your business. Now, I do want to start with a bit of a geeky admission. I do love writing grant applications. So being a business mentor and a chartered accountant, working with different businesses, around their strategy, what are they going to do in the future, what have they done in the past, I really treat a grant application like a business plan because you as a business owner know the most about your business and I'm there to extract that information out of you, to put it into the application to be able to showcase your business in the best possible light. So I've worked in government and corporate. I've only done a couple of years in government. However, it did open my eyes to this world of grants that nobody knows about. And nobody really shares. And it's all very pieced together. 
that you have to go and search for grants over here and then go and try and find a grant writer and then try and do this workshop and then try and work out what you're doing. Um, and this is what we're all about, to try and bring it all under one umbrella to help you from the entire end-to-end -end process to being successful in grants. Now, I have an 88% success rate in 2022 and overall 85%. And this is down to we will, when we find a grant, go through the guidelines go through your business, go through your project that you want to apply for and really determine whether that grant is the best opportunity for you to apply and that your project is strong enough to make the application. So if it's, you know, we'll work together to, to work out how we can put the best application in. So as I've already said, client applications are my thing. They're a bit of strategy, a bit of finance, a bit of forward thinking and a bit of backwards looking in terms of what have we achieved and where do we want to go. So allow me to work in my zone of genius so you can work in yours and your business. Think of it as an outsource of those skills so that you can go and spend your time on things that you enjoy and the things that you're best suited for. So this is a quote that is so applicable when it comes to grants because I just find that business owners and organization members just do not know what they don't know. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know what questions to ask. And if we think about the types of organizations that are giving out these grant um, programs, they're the government, their councils, sometimes they don't even advertise them properly because that means they have to do more work. So we need to be proactive, we need to know where to look and be in that grants ecosystem together to make sure that we're maximizing those opportunities. And it is my belief that there's a grant out there, if there's a grant out there that you're eligible for, we need to do our hardest to make that application because if you don't do an application, you're definitely not in the running. So let's make a start. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my proven process that I use with my own clients um, to write successful grant applications. This is the process that I work with that has got me the 85% success rate and last year 88%. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I've worked with a number of clients over a number of industries across all of Australia um, to be successful in getting those funds into their bank account, to purchase that piece of equipment, to hire that extra staff member, to be able to pay down some debt, and to be able to take advantage of this money that is in circulation in the economy from the government agencies. And today, um, the content is general in nature in terms of how to write the applications, but there is some specific um, information around Australia. So we're talking federal, we're talking states, and we're talking local governments. Um, they're the main three providers of the grants um, in Australia. So at the moment in Australia, there are more than 1,500 grants available. Now, that doesn't mean to say that your business or organisation is eligible for all 1,500, but it does mean that there is a lot of information out there that we need to sift through and search for that one grant or two grants that you are eligible for so you can make your application. So let's make a start. What does success mean to you? Now, we know that this means different things to different people, but when we are looking at a grant application, when we've found a grant that we want to apply for, we really need to think about the grant application process either as another project in your business or like a job application where we know we need to do certain steps, gather information, you know, improve it, and then make our application. And we don't know who's applying we don't know who's assessing it. We don't know how much money is really there. There might be a limit on per application, but we don't know what the total pool of money is. So we just need to be mindful of that, but it's all in the preparation. So we need to get organized from the beginning because again, remember I said, we're not going to have a whole lot of time. Think about it right now. If I said you today in a month's time, we're going to have to do a whole grant application, then what, what does that mean for you? Um, doesn't mean you have to do extra stuff or if you've got it all good to go. Do you know what you would spend a $20,000 grant on if, if a program came out today? That's what we need to be thinking about. And this is why I'm always spruiking the idea of being grants ready. What is your strategy? What is those, What are those pieces of equipment or efficiencies that will help your business to grow? That If a grant came out, would you be ready to make that application? So we need to get all the information. When the program, grant program is released, now we never know when they're going to be released. 
just because they came out last year or they said that they'll do them in, in whatever month. We all know that government's are notorious for being late and um, delivering late. So we cannot guarantee, one, that they'll even come out, and two, when they would come, would come out. So we need to be ready anyway. We need to make sure we read the criteria properly. So there's two things for this. We need to make sure we're reading the criteria for our own organisation. Can we actually apply? And does our project or what we plan to do on a high level fit into the program guidelines? So if a grant is for $50,000 and your project that you want to do is $200,000, can you bump, can you fund the other $150,000? And if you can't, then unfortunately, we, you know, we need to think about, well, is it really appropriate for us to apply for the $50,000? Um, and then some grants also require a co-contribution. So if your project is $100,000, we could apply for a grant for 50,000 and we would have to fund the other 50,000. So every grant is different. They do sort of seem to follow, you know, some general guidelines, but every single grant application is always different. This is where we're going to draft our outline. What are we going to spend the money on? More often than not, these grants are money in our bank account. So we need to know what we're going to spend on. And this is where we create the um Grant application as a Word document. So this is where I literally copy and paste, or my team does, um, the application questions onto a Word document that I share with the client so that we can update as we go and keep on track. So we number all of them and um, we set deadlines. But this is what we need to do at the very beginning to make sure we're organised. Sometimes there might be a webinar that gets um, recorded or that you can attend from the programme funder. And they might go through some questions, they might just go through some basics. But again, knowing all that information, getting all the guidelines, getting all the templates, getting all the additional information and being completely sure that this is the right grant to make the application for. We don't want to get halfway through that application two weeks in and realise, oh, hang on, this was probably not really appropriate and you've just wasted all that time. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Now we need to plan what we're going to do. So that Word document turns into a numbered checklist of all the components required. And as you'll see in a few steps later, we need to know what we are going to write and who we need to get information from that are external to our own organisation. Who's going to help us? Do you have a team in your, in your organisation or do you need to get external people and bringing those people together? Who's got the information at hand that you need to collate for your grant application and having a kickoff meeting, bringing everyone together, getting everyone on the same page saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're looking at pretty tight timeframes and let's make a plan. Now, this doesn't have to be me, but I do encourage you to engage either a grant writer or someone that has had experience with writing grants, but has also been successful. So there are many people out there that can write grants till the cows come home but they keep getting rejected and they keep getting rejected. So we've got to work with the right people to get us the success, get us that approval and get those funds into our bank account. And we need to plan at this stage that we want to submit the grant application one to two days before the deadline, because we all know that things go wrong, things crop up, you know, you're still running your business during this process. So if we want to be really successful, we also want to plan to submit it one or two days before the submission date. Now, when it comes to the panel, we don't know who's going to be on it. We don't really know how they're going to do it. And remember, they don't know anything about our business. Some panels will just um, assess the grant applications from the first one that was um, submitted to the last one. So we don't want to be the last one five minutes before the deadline. And we also don't want to cause that um, increase our stress either. So this is a really important part when you are planning from the start to go, well, actually, if it's due on the 28th, we need to be working backwards to the 26th. Um, so that final, you know, just final review and checking that it's all good to go. As you just on that also, now the grant portals are getting really quite sophisticated. So most of them, you have to have a login, you have to upload all the documents. And if you don't upload the right documents, they won't accept your application. So we just need to be really careful of that. If there is something that's mandatory and we don't have it, you actually can't press the submit button. So we need to make sure that we've got everything in there that we they are requiring. Now, this is where we're really thinking about, well, what is our project? What, you know, we know on a high level what it's for, but what are the true components of it in treating this grant application like a project? 
Um, so this is where the grant readiness comes in, that we need to know some of this information before we even get to the grant application stage. How is this project going to happen? What is it that we're buying? Who needs to be involved? What suppliers? What tradies? Who is it that's going to help us? Is it specialised equipment? Where are we going to get it from? What's the lead time? All of those things. And allocating the tasks and action to, you, to your team. So who is going to be responsible for what during this process? And all important, as I say, when we're, when we're applying for grants, it's always money. So we need to know our budget. What costs are involved in getting this project off the ground to completion and linking that back to the criteria for this grant? So step four, now this is a big step because this is where we need to be really careful about what we are answering and how we're responding to what's in the grant application. So what are they looking for? What are they asking for? And the supporting documents is where it can vary wildly. So I've um, done grant applications for $25,000 and we've had to write about a 30 page document. I've then done other grant applications for 15,000 we've had to answer four questions. So it can really, really depend and you need to be able to read through those guidelines and be really clear about what we need to attach. Writing letters of support. Now, this is one thing that a lot of people are quite surprised about or just simply don't know that these exist when it comes to grant applications. What do I mean by letters of support? Basically, thinking about your project of who else is involved, who else is it going to benefit? So if you're building an accommodation suite at your um, property, it's going to benefit the other cafes in town or other tourism operators, or it's going to meet a need for the town or whatever it might be. So in that instance, we would get letters of support from them to, to basically say, hey, and we would draft the letters anyway for them to sign, but it would say something along the lines of, hey, if this project goes ahead, we will benefit in these ways and please support it. That's as simple as it is, but they can give really good weight to your project to the panelists because they're like, well, hey, this, this project has got far greater reach than just supporting this business or organization. So it is a, um, a big draw card and a big plus. Getting quotes. Now, more often than not, when we're doing grant applications, we have to provide the quotes. They have to be within normally either a month or three months. So they need to be current quotes. And this is where I talk about the grant readiness, because we need to basically plan these projects, get these quotes before that, so that when the grant application comes out or the grant program comes out, we can simply go back to them and say, hey, that quote you did about six months ago. Can you just update it or just check that it's current and make it current and send it back to us? Some people don't like doing quotes. Some people's processes are that quotes can take days and days. And if you're going to them saying, hey, look, we're only really going to do this project if we get a grant, it can really put them off. So building relationships, being prepared and getting those quotes early and making sure that you are not asking for the quote to be submitted the day of submission. Because remember, you've got to do a whole lot of other stuff. So making sure you're creating that buffer, giving them enough time to do it, but making sure you get it in. Because as I said, if you don't have the quotes and it's a requirement, you won't be able to submit your application. Financial reports. So here in Australia, most grants more than $50,000 require at least the last couple of years of financial reports. So it's really important that you have your financial reports up to date so that we can submit these with the grant. And this is really where we're getting shit done. We're getting everything together to be ready for our grant and know what's happening in the project, knowing what our costs are. You know, at the start of it, we might have thought, oh, this is a 50 grand project. We've gone out and got all the quotes we think we need. We might have forgotten a few things and we're already up to $80,000 and go, well, is, is this still going to be relevant or can we fund the difference or um, whatever it might be? So we need to be really clear about what we are asking for. Now, we're up to step five, but we're only just starting to write our draft application now. So you can see there's a whole lot of planning, a whole lot of work and organisation that needs to be done before we start writing. Time and time again, clients will tell me that in the past, they have just quickly read the application, read through the criteria, tick the boxes, going, yep, we can apply, and basically started writing. Then they've stumbled across, you know, they've the, the waited too long, the couple of days before it's due, and they're, oh, we've got to get quotes, we've got to get this, we've got to get that. So this is why we front end all of that, and then it's not till step five that we go, right, and now we can have a go at writing the draft application. 
So being really careful about what is the key criteria to address? What is it that this program is trying to achieve and how does our pro project relate to that? Checking the assessment waiting. So as I've said, we don't know who's applying. We don't know who else is applying. We don't know who the panelists are. We don't know who, what they know about us. We have to assume they know nothing. And then more often than not, they will allocate some assessment weightings for each of the questions. But what they fail to do most of the time is there'll be four or five questions that need answering and they'll allocate them 20% each. But then you've also got all the supporting documents that you've just attached as well. So, you know, we know that it's not a perfect science. And so we just need to basically follow the rules, follow the steps, do as they say, attach it if they ask for it, don't attach it if they don't ask for it. You know, being smart about all of those types of things make a big difference. And I can't stress enough here, checking the word or character limits is so important. Now that they've got sophisticated with the grant portals, if you copy and paste from your Word document into your portal and it says 500 words and you've got 550, it will literally chop it off at 500. So back in our Word document, we need to be adding in brackets, or I add in, the, in brackets, the word limit. That does two things. That allows us to be able to use the Word document to go, well, I'll just highlight that and see how many words I'm up to. And also when we're answering and writing the draft application, we know, well, is that a 50 word answer or are they wanting 500? And if you've got 500 word limit, be sure that I will use 499 words to get across what we need to, um, to be in the best light for our project. Now that we've had a go at writing the draft submission, we're then gonna overlay it with our why and our story. So this is where we are really showcasing our project, showcasing our organization, showcasing our capabilities, writing in that persuasive way to say, well, this is why you should support this project and allow us to have the funding to do what we wanna do. And making sure you include the why our project is the best with the most impact. So back again, going back to the guidelines and looking at, well, what is, what is the, who is the target audience? Do we meet all the criteria? Now that we've got all the information, that we've done our draft, is it still meeting the guidelines and the criteria from the very beginning? So if you can see that it's an issue of process. We're forever going backwards and forwards, adding it a bit in, doing a bit more research, um, to make sure that we're writing the best application we possibly can. And as I've said, including the benefits, and we need to be really simple in our language and make no assumptions. The only assumption to make is that they know nothing about your project, nothing about you, and nothing about your organization. So that is like a job application. This is the only chance you've got for them to go, wow, this is awesome. We want to support it because ultimately that's what we want. And then it's all about reviewing so whether you've written it whether someone else has written it even I get someone else to review it might, quite often it might be the client one to check for grammar two to check that it's factually correct you know what are we saying we're going to do at the end of the day it's up to you the client to agree to that because the application is under your name not mine so we need to make sure that whatever's in that application and that project plan that you are prepared to do it if you're successful with the grant funding. And, you know, if things change and you are successful, you aren't locked in until you sign that grant agreement. So I just want to say that because some, you know, business is changing so quickly and sometimes we put a grant application in and they can't sound, can take a while to get a response um, from the funders. So we just need to be mindful of that. Um, but the review and having someone else read it, someone else even from outside your organization or a family member to go, well, can you can you describe to me in your own words what we what you think that project is about um, and see if it is the right thing. Pressing submit on your application. As I said, ideally this is one or two days before the close off time. Um, even I still get nervous pressing submit and double checking it all. Some clients will um, press bu the button themselves. Sometimes I'll do it after their review. So again, we just work together to, to suit um, what you would like. And, you know, this is a big process, even for a little grant, because we're doing it addition additionally to the rest of your business operations. So making sure that you celebrate and also reflect on the process. And then quite often people are like, radio, hmm, okay, that was a bit tough, but we've got through it. 
Now, how can we use that grant application as a resource to go and apply for the next grant? So it becomes a spiral effect, a compounding effect, and that's what I love about it as well. So there we have it, the seven steps to successful grant applications that I use with my clients. And as I say, it has got me the 85% success rate for grants. And I cannot stress enough to you that that planning, that pre-work before we even start writing, making sure you've got your budgets, creating those relationships to get your quotes and all that kind of stuff is so, so important. So if you just want to pop into the chat, any takeaways or what your biggest takeaway was today from today's um, outline of my process? Was there anything you thought, oh, yep, yeah, I do that, or oh, I didn't, didn't realise that? So if you can, um, I'd love for you to share with me what your biggest takeaway was in the chat. Um, but it's all about the preparation, and then we get into the planning. We're creating and designing your project, and then we're um, collating all the documents that we need to be able to tick the box, answer the question, and remember to answer the question exactly as they have asked it. So don't go off on a tangent and making sure that we're really simplistic in our answering. So if they've said, what is your project? I always like to start that with, this project includes the purchase of this piece of equipment and go from there. Then we start writing, then we add our why and our persuasive language to basically say pick me pick me our project is the best and this is why and then that all important review and submission so again if it's not submitted it's not there nowadays with the portal you can't email anybody um, you need to make sure you get your confirmation email back to say it has been submitted um, and going from there so if um, anybody wants to share um what they took away from that yes adding having knowing what documents to um include and reading that and understanding that is a really really important thing as well cool remember if you have any questions please pop them into the chat with the letter q at the start and i'm more than happy to answer them for you so here is a range of clients that over the years i've helped get um grants money for their business that has meant that they can grow and expand quicker than they might have but it's also ba um, basing themselves on their strategy and um, helping them to um, be able to basically um, submit their strategy and execute their strategy Question, when you write the benefits to the target audiences, do you need to quantify it? Um, that's a really good question. If you can quantify it in terms of, say, for example, your particular project was going to benefit the three primary schools in the area, I would say, well, that is a thousand children that may benefit from this project. Um, they do like numbers, but if you can really just, if you've got numbers, use them. And if not, just really talk in positive um, general terms. So um, most of those questions might only be 100, 150 words. So again, you've got to balance the word count with what information you're trying to get. Um, but that's one thing that you can also demonstrate in your letter of support. So for example, if your project again was uh, benefiting primary schools, I would go to those primary schools and with a draft letter of support and say, hey, can you please submit this for us and um, help us out and do it that way. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can do it, but you don't necessarily have to quantify it. Um, it really does depend on your project, but awesome question. Thank you. So my question to you is, what is the difference between these businesses receiving grants and your business? And you might be thinking, well, they knew about grants or I don't know anything about grants. So um, we can be aware of the grants and then make the applications. Letters of support, yes. So when some grant um, programs will say only give us the documents we require and we request. Some will say, hey, here's a spot for eight extra documents that you can attach at your discretion. So sometimes, and sometimes they will ask for them specifically. So again, it's about reading, reading the guidelines. What are they asking for? If they don't ask for them specifically, but they give you the opportunity to, um, to attach any other documents that you think might be relevant, you attach them there. So 
more often than not, 99% of the time, I submit grant applications with letters of support in some shape or form. And again, I would be drafting the letter, putting it into a Word document and, say, and sending it out to more than you expect to get back. So if you can aim for the two or three to get back, I'd probably send it to five or six different people. If you end up with five or six back, great but you definitely want sort of the two or three is a great number to be aiming for to um, submit with your application. And letters of support, as I say, I draft them. We do a paragraph outlining what the project is, outlining how that would benefit. I do give them the opportunity to add their own words of how they think it would benefit them and then basically say, please support this project because we're on board with it too. So here's a couple of clients. Um, Chris got a $25,000 grant for a cool room at his farm shop. It's created more efficiencies. It allowed him, it saved him so much time going backwards and forwards to the processor of the produce um, because he had more cold storage. So um, that was a great investment for his business. And Ben and Jesse, um, their trailer that they got through the business grant was allowing them for Ben to be full-time in the business much earlier than they ever imagined. So um, two examples where grants have really accelerated their growth in their business um, and, you know, now they're going gangbusters. So now I just want to take a little bit of time to show you how I can help you and your business to grow and expand with business grants. Now, in Australia, as I said, there are 1,500 grants available at the moment but that is across the board so that's across business community not for profit but how we need to know how we're going to find the one that might be applicable to you so in Australia there are so many different grants for so many different things and we saw in COVID that there was a lot of funding being given out some of them they called them grants but they were really subsidies wage subsidies um, and now you know we're in February there are a lot of grants coming out at the moment. So it's important to start looking. Um, and you can be looking at local level, state level and federal level here in Australia. Again, you know, there's different organisations, Workforce Australia, New South Wales Business, Victor Business Victoria, have all got different grants out there with different eligibility criteria, depending on um, industries you operate, depending on the size of your business depending on whether you're GST registered, all of those sorts of things come into what grants you can apply for. So what's next? I had created the Grants Club VIP membership. Now this came out of feedback that I was getting from clients where they were contacting me or they were being referred to me because I knew about grants and we'd have a chat, I'd have a quick look as we were on the phone and there'd be no grant right there and then. And then I go, oh, well, can you let me know when a grant comes up? And I'm like, well, I could, but then that's a lot of time for my team to be searching and um, with no real guarantee that that's gonna transpire into some work. So I identified that there was a gap of businesses that want to know about grants, want to learn, but just simply don't have the time. So they basically want to outsource that grant searching, that funding and grant writing if they choose to as well. So this is how I came up with the Grants Club VIP membership. So this membership is where my, me and my team do all the hard work and we search for grants for you. So we learn about your business and we um, match you with grants that will help you to grow and expand your business. As I said, there's 1,500 grants at the moment, but are you really going to search through all of that? We have got the skill and expertise to know how to search, where to search, and have that tailored response for your business. We're not going to send you um, a whole screed of grant alerts for you to still siphon through them. It's like, no, we actually do that real detailed search and go, we think this one you're eligible for, have a look at it and go from there. As we are here, we continue to share our proven process on how to write grant applications. So we offer a whole end-to-end -end service where we can search for the grants, match you with the grants, write the grant for you, or we can review it if you want to write it yourself. We have all those options to suit your business needs. We provide you with special discounts to get your grant applications written by me, if, if you're a member, and we can assist you on your business to get grant ready. So we've got clients that are in the membership that we're doing their business plans. We're doing strategy sessions. We're getting them to think about how can they 
um, expand their business? What are the types of things that they could invest in to expand their business? And then um, also linking to what kind of grants could be out there or coming up. It's a 12 month membership initially, and we've got scheduled events. So we've got quarterly masterclasses held online and they're recorded. So that is a resource that you will have as a member for the life of your membership. There's other signature programs coming out for 2023 around strategy, around finance, um, and how we can just improve our overall business acumen to be the best we can be. There's a private Facebook group for learning and asking questions, and to be surrounded with like-minded businesses who are also wanting to learn more about grants. You get a personalized strategy call with me where we go through your business and we work out where are some different avenues and how can we be strategic about getting these grants and these funding for your business. How does it work? So once you join the membership, you'll fill out the membership form, which is a detailed form of questions about your business. The more we know about your business, the easier it will be for us to find grants to match you with. Then when we match you with the grants, we, talk, we will have a chat and work out whether you want to proceed, What's the time frame? What's involved? Look at the application form. Do you want to write it yourself? Do you want us to write it? We go through all of that and um, work together to get that grant application written. So what is included in the membership? 12-month membership. You get the one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me, private Facebook group, access to any VIP resources that we produce, and the quarterly masterclasses. So Last quarter, which I'm actually going to run again as well, is an extension of this workshop on how to really know the ins and outs of writing grant applications. And for this quarter, it is all about strategy. What's your strategy for 2023? How can we grow our business? How can we be aware and combine the grants that are out there or maybe coming up and other options um, to grow your business? So the value is more than $5,000. Um, and basically you're outsourcing that to us. But today you can get started for just $3,000. So that's a 12 month membership with access to us, access to, you know, I've got members that are like, oh, I've got this business idea. Can we have a strategy call? Can we do this? Can we do a business plan? Oh, I saw this grant. Can we apply for it? Um, so $3,000 today, all monthly payments. My VAs are gonna put that link into the chat um, in a moment and if someone can click on that to see if it is working that'd be um, that'd be great so we've got all the links there as well Oops. Um, but the main one you want right now is the grants club link to check that out on our website so at the moment I'm that confident that Every business that comes into the membership, there is a grant out there for you. We just need to find it. So at the moment, there is a money back guarantee that at the end of the 12 months, if we haven't been able to match you with a suitable grant for your business, you will get your $3,000 back. So that is how confident we are that we will search for grants for you and find them that you can apply for. So that's pretty cool. And to date, the members that have come into the membership most of them we've been able to find grants within their first quarter of being with us. So again, an awesome achievement, but it just shows, I don't know if it's manifestation or whether we're just looking in the right place and we're looking at very targeted search criteria for you and your business and we find what we're looking for. So that's, that, that excites me um, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's my mission to get as many businesses applying for grants that they're eligible for as possible. So if you do want to chat with me to see whether the membership is right for you, please send me an email um, at hello at theefficiencycoach.com.au, which um, Erica can put into the chat as well. Um, best to email me. Things are a bit hectic at the moment, but I will, um, you know, we can. I can talk about grants all day and we can really work out whether this is right for you and your business. The other thing I do want to say is if you have a grant right now that you're looking for help to get um, written with us, you can definitely book in a chat and we can um, write that for you as well as a separate as a separate project. So at the moment, that's a that's an offering um, and we can just email me if you've got any questions as well. So I just want to quickly go over um, 
some main questions that come up. Can you help me with writing grants? Absolutely. We can do the whole lot for you. We can do parts of it with you. We can guide you through the process, um, whichever you need the support for. I don't have a business plan. Can you write one for me? So some grant applications will require you to attach a business plan. There's no specification about what a business plan needs to be, whether it's three pages, 10 pages, or what it needs to include. But we do need to make sure we've got some type of business plan. And also that's where our strategy is written as well. So we can definitely work with you to write your business plan. But this is where the grant readiness comes in as well, because we don't want to be doing that at the time of writing the application as well. We want to be doing before it. What's my success rate? 85%. Um, pretty proud of that. I've maintained it for the whole time I've had my business and, um, you know, we've got some great results. How do I know what I need a grant for now? This is really where the strategy stuff comes into, being in part of the membership to go, well, what, what of my business, what parts of that is actually going to ever be available for a grant? Um, and there are other businesses where, you know, i um, be like, oh, that type of business, there's very few grants. Um, and so we might need to, to go down some different avenues and, um, you know, change our strategy a little bit as well. So I do look forward to chatting with anyone that wants to talk about grants. As I say, I'll limit it to 20 minutes, but I could talk all day about grants and how they can help you and your business. Now, I do invite you to um, join this free Facebook group. So anyone that's been to this workshop can join my efficient business community. Now, this is where we're sharing information. Um, some grant stuff gets sent into that and sharing some tips. And again, being able to, to link up with other like-minded business owners who are in that um, growth mindset, who are wanting to invest in their business and also grow, grow, and grow. So pop your phone up to your screen, click on that QR code. The other thing is all of these links will be sent with the recording email later on today. So um, if you haven't had a chance to write them down, you'll get them in the email from Eventbrite. So keep an eye out for that as well. So it couldn't be easier. I'd love for you to be in the membership with you and your business or your organization. Let's get started today. I'm all about getting onto it. We can't wait. When it comes to the grant space, we have to be efficient. We have to get onto it. I've got grants at the moment where someone rang yesterday, they're due on the 24th. So we have to act quickly to be in the running. There's the link for the um, information on the membership. And as I've already said, nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity and especially a missed opportunity that we didn't even know was there. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please do get in touch. There's my email address. If you're in Australia, you can text me and we can organize a call. There's my email. And please follow me on Facebook, Insta, uh, LinkedIn. And I have a YouTube channel where these recordings are also um, saved as well. So if anyone does have any um, final questions, please do pop them into the chat. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. I do look forward to chatting with you all and have a great day.